Hello. Welcome to session two of PHS 318, which is titled Nature and Scope of Public Administration. This session covers four main topics, which are outlined as follows the history and evolution of public administration. We will also discover how public administration has been defined over the years. We would also learn the skills and roles that public administrators need in order to succeed in their job as public administrators. And then lastly, we will take a look at the distinction as well as the similarities between public administration and business administration. Topic one, history and evolution of public administration. It has been said that the practice of public administration has been with us for a very long time. The reason for this statement is that the fact that individuals and groups are able to come together and mobilize resources to be able to, for example, undertake a road construction is an example of the practice of public administration. But the systematic attempt to undertake scholarly inquiry into the field of public administration is quite a recent phenomenon. It is accepted that within the, lit within the public admi admi administration literature that the scholarly, at the scholarly attempt to, un to study public administration largely began with the effort of Thomas Woodrow Wilson, who was one time a president of the United States of America. He spearheaded the establishment of public administration as a distinct field of study through an article titled The Study of Administration, which he published in the year 1881 in a journal called Political Science Quarterly. Woodrow Wilson believed that politics and administration had different objectives. For example, he conceived, as, he conceived of politics as that which is concerned with the maintenance of political power and how it is captured. Political science also focuses on issues like elections and votes. And so according to Woodrow Wilson, that objective was not consistent with what the administrator was expected to do. In his mind, he conceived of administration as that which is fundamentally concerned with the implementation of public policy. Now, given that the objectives of political science and public administration were not the same, Woodrow Wilson argued for the need to establish public administration as a distinct field of study in order to be able to develop its own principles and methods and scholarly inquiry into social phenomenon. Today, the discipline of public administration has spread all over the globe and it is taught by thousands of universities and colleges and studied by millions of students of which you are one. Topic two, definition of public administration. Now, the words public administration is a combination of two words. On one hand, we have the word public. On the other hand, we have administration. Therefore, it is very important that to be able to define public administration, we need to understand what these two words mean. Therefore, we are going to first of all begin by trying to explain what the word public means. The word public is quite difficult to define, but we can always think about public as that which is concerned with all the people, as that which, which is relevant to, which pertains to everybody within society or as that which is held in common. So for example, we can say public transport, which means that it is a transportation system that anybody at all can use, regardless of race, age, or gender. But the word administration is a combination of two words. These are ad and ministrari. Ad and ministrari are fundamentally Latin words. The word ad means to, and ministrari means serve. Therefore, at the very basic level, the word administration means to serve. If we combine the word public with administration, we arrive at the conclusion that the word public administration basically means to serve the people or to serve the interest of the common person. 
but such a definition is woefully inadequate and so there's a need for us to consider some of the scholarly definitions that have been used over the years. Let's take a look at some of the um, definitions in the literature by scholars of the field. Dan Hart defines public administration as that which is concerned with the management of public programs. Johnson also defines public administration as that which, is, which can be portrayed as the wheel of relationships focused on the implementation of public policy. Fesler and Kettle define public administration in, as something that is in all modern nations um, identified with the executive branch of government. If we take a look at these three definitions, we can fairly conclude that the word public administration suggests the following. One, public administration concerns the implementation of public policy. It means that once policymakers design policy, it is the business of public administrators to translate the policy to, into reality. Public administration is also concerned with service delivery. The word public administration in terms of definition also has to do with the executive arm of government. Mind you, political scientists suggest that there are three arms of government. We have the legislature, we have the executive, and we have the judiciary. Of these three, public administration is closely, is closely related to the executive arm of government. And then lastly, public administration has to do with management of resources, not just fiscal or monetary resources, but also human resources. Topic three, skills required for public management. The first skill that public administrators need in order to perform their functions effectively is political management skills. By this we mean that it is not enough for the public administrator to only have technical knowledge. They have to be able to understand the political processes and procedures involved. In other words, they need to be politically astute so that they can always maneuver the political processes in order to carry out the business of policy implementation. Public administrators also need to learn program management skills. They have to be able to put together the needed skills and resources in order to achieve public policy implementation and enhance service delivery. They also need to have resource management skills. It has been said that human wants and needs are insatiable, but the resources at our disposal to satisfy these needs are limited. Therefore, public administrators need to be able to sort of be able to have a scale of preference, be able to, under, be able to manage the resource, the scarce resources at their disposal in order to be able to manage them well for effective implementation of public policy. Topic four, similarities and differences between public administration and business administration. Similarities. Both public administration and business administration depend on resources from the environment to meet their objectives. These resources could be raw materials, or they could be human resources, or they could be financial or fiscal resources. Again, in terms of similarities, some of the principles such as planning, organizing, coordinating, apply to both fields. But in terms of differences, we say that the incentive of the public administrator is to serve the people, is to serve the interests of the nation, while the business administrator is in basically interested in making profit. Again, we say that the activities and actions of public administrators are open to public scrutiny and accountability because they derive, public administrators derive their power from us, therefore we need to be, we, they have to be held accountable. But the businessman tends to be less accountable to the people. Lastly, public administration is geared towards service delivery, while business administration focuses on delivering goods and products. In conclusion, we make the following remarks. 
The establishment of public administration as a field of study is largely credited to the effort of Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Again, we say that public administration fundamentally carries the idea of policy implementation, which is to render service to the people. Public administration also touches on almost everything that affects society, education, health, crime, social justice, just to mention a few. Lastly, there is no universally acceptable definition of public administration because different scholars tend to define the field from different experiences and from different backgrounds. Again, the public administrator needs a range of skills and play multiple roles in their line of work. Lastly, there are marked differences between public administration and business administration, but there are also key similarities as well. This brings us to the end of session two. Get ready as we move to session three.